All right, well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, look at all these little creatures. So, uh, gonna change things up a bit. I just started painting these these little rock bugs um, a few weeks ago, and I sort of gone crazy. So I'm thinking of, of going in a slightly different direction. I'm going to show you guys how I painted this little, uh, well, I say little, but it's called the Big Poplar Sphinx Moth. So I'm going to show you guys how I did this and why I'm doing this. So first thing I'm doing is this is just a plain old little river rock, like a skipping stone, and literally just pick them out off the side of the river, you know, right, like you do. And... Uh, I'm just doing the whole silhouette. You can see I have the image already drawn on there. I'm doing the whole silhouette in, in just a coat of black paint. And I know it seems kind of tedious that I'm being that meticulous just to color the whole thing black. But once the paint dries, I can actually still see the, you know, the brush strokes and it actually still acts as a guide. And that black uh, coat of paint just helps all the colors on the surface pop. You, know, you can see on my beautiful... Uh, morning cloak up in the corner, up in the right hand corner, and my little uh, Rudy Sulphur in the other corner. It it actually helps the colors pop, either a solid black or a solid white silhouette. I think uh, the morning cloak is a solid black, or the, I'm sorry, the red admiral. The red admiral is a solid black, and then the sulphur is a is a bright white uh, silhouette anyway so um, I have the I have the silhouette painted that nice undercoat of black and then I let that dry and then I just start painting over it and I've sped this up a lot the whole process of just painting this one little moth took me like 40 50 minutes so I have it sped up a lot but um I started doing this just a few weeks ago. I hadn't intended to draw bugs when I started doing this. What had happened was um, I have been, I've been going through some stuff, some uh, just a quite a few life changes and thought a nice calming form of therapy would be to learn how to do a style of painting called dot art. Yeah, if, if you've ever seen like dot mandalas that people paint on rocks or I was going to try and start doing that, and actually I'm not too bad, just FYI. But um, I would make mistakes on things like dragging the dot and uh, keeping them symmetrical and everything, but I noticed that some of those mistakes just kind of look like beetle legs. So one day I'm just like, why not try to draw a beetle? And I did. It looked great, and, and now I'm insane. Um... It has led up to this moment. And I'm not even kidding, guys. I've been doing this for not even a full month now, I don't think. And I they're they're turning out pretty good. I've even sold a couple already, just just to like family and friends. But I mean, hey, money is money, bro. But um so I'm literally taking those dot tools now and I'm dragging paint right now I'm painting the underwing of the big poplar sphinx and it's kind of a mauvey pink color they don't really have eye spots like some other moths have they just have these nice beautiful blotches of color and i'm literally using the dot tool to just drag that color upward and the good thing about this is all the stuff that would be considered a mistake in dot art is just shading for the bug it's really nice to be able to kind of do those line strokes because it just looks like hairs. And for things like moths and butterflies that actually have a lot of scales and a lot of uh, hair follicles, there's that detail just looks great. So, um, yeah, I started doing this as a form of therapy, as something totally different. And then once I drew that first bug, it was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we're doing this now. So I've just been going to town drawing all these bugs. I have drawn, well, I've painted quite a few. Each one starts with a drawing, but it ends with paint, which is really, really interesting because I've been a, I'm an okay artist, but 
all of my life, I've never been good at drawing bugs and I've never been that great at painting. So the fact that I'm really good with this, that it's really clicking for me is just mind blowing. You guys can't imagine how much the fact that I can do this just catches me off guard and I am just living every minute of it. But, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm painting this little guy and what I thought I'd do, at least with this video and maybe going forward is I'll just pick a bug still, you know, an insect that's common or native to the Pacific Northwest. And I will take this time to, you know, do some crafting and talk to you guys about the bugs like this guy. He's actually quite interesting because everybody thinks, you know, he's a moth. He's a sphinx moth. Immediately, people kind of like to loop this guy in with the rest of the nocturnal pollinators, which is a really fun group of characters, let me tell you. But that's for a later video. But this particular moth, the big poplar sphinx moth, isn't a pollinator at all. In fact, much like several Saturnidae moths, he doesn't even have mouth parts. So he can't drink nectar. He doesn't eat at all. These guys, they actually procreate similar to that of like the polyphemus moth or the atlas moth or the luna moth, where they lay eggs on the host plants which in this case are uh, willow trees, poplar, and uh, cottonwood trees, poplar being, you know, where he gets his namesake from. They lay their eggs on the tree leaves, and the caterpillar eats for the entire lifespan. So all that the caterpillar eats is literally all the energy that this moth has throughout its entire lifespan, which is pretty short given that he can't eat. So, um, they, up here in the Pacific Northwest, we only get one brood of these guys, but they actually have a wider range. So they're all the way, they go from, uh, parts of Canada all the way down to like Arizona and Nevada. You can find them all over the place, but it, down in the warmer States, you actually have two broods of these a year. So you have two basically two generations of this moth per year. But up here in the Pacific Northwest, where it's colder, you actually only have one. So what will happen is in the spring, the late spring, the adults will emerge, immediately go to find a mate, and they'll lay their eggs come the end of summer. So actually about now, seeing as it's September, they'll lay their eggs, the eggs will hatch, and they'll get um, these awesome kind of pale green caterpillars with a lot of little white lines. It looks a lot like a tomato worm, only the horn on the back of back of the abdomen on the back of the caterpillar is almost non-existent. It's super, super tiny. Just FYI, people, tomato worms, the horns you see on their back end is just for show. But um, with this guy up here, once that caterpillar decides to pupate, it pupates and will actually burrow down into the ground and make its cocoon there. So it'll pupate over the winter and then emerge in the late spring of the following year as an adult and the cycle repeats. So oh, you can see now I, I, I keep breaking out the dot tools. So I, I use a brush for a little bit of the shading, but for the majority of it, because it's such fine detail, these dot tools actually work really, really good. Look at all that color. Now, another interesting fact about these guys, apart from the fact that they don't eat, is I'm using a lot of grays in this painting, but the moth itself is actually a couple of different shades of brown. So when you see it in photographs and stuff, they're always depicted with a brown color. In the top half of the wings, where I have all those nice pretty silvers, are a really, really light brown. And then once it passes kind of the middle of the wings, it gets really dark brown. But when I've seen them in the past, they, they always looked gray to me. And part of that was because I'd always see them in the evening. They are a nocturnal uh, moth. So, and the reason why I decided to go with this guy this week is because this is actually one of the first reasons I noticed that the biodiversity in the Pacific Northwest was changing. I used to see these guys all over the place when I was a kid. And nowadays I don't see any. 
I still see Sphinx moths. There's a few floating around, but I've seen maybe one or two in the three years that I've been here. And it's actually been five years. God, I've been here five years. But I would see these guys all throughout summer when I was a kid. And part of that's literally their host plants aren't here anymore. So that's why I use this to kind of commemorate that this guy was the, the moth that kind of sparked the interest. All right, well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, what bug would you like to see me paint next? Uh, comment below, let me know. So thank you for watching. If you'd like to see more, if you'd like me to do more of these videos, please subscribe. Please click that like button and follow and comment if you want to see more. Thank you.